This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky. Get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, where we talk about tech from the perspective of people in the flyover states. Until we have somebody not from a flyover state, as you'll find out in a moment. I'm Mike Sorg. I'm, I'm also the video producer and uh, content producer over here at Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Media Services. Uh, a world traveler in video of shooting lately, Baja and Formula and Aero Design. A lot of fun stuff there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun here. First of all, with us on the line from Studio C joining us, and we have vetted his shirt to make sure it will not break the feeds this week. It is John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. And, and and beta tester extraordinaire. And beta tester extraordinaire. He did it. He pushed the button. He's in the danger zone. You can't even wait after WWDC. <laughs> Man, you live on the wild side. We'll get into that a bit later. Uh, but also with us, he is a media producer as well. We talk about him every week. Uh, as part of uh, the ad block on this show, Alex Cars is joining us. Whoops, that's it. There we go. Alex Cars joining us from uh, somewhere in California. You're not in Long Beach now. I, I can't. I forget where. No, I'm. I'm in Long. You're Beach. in. You're back in Long I'm Beach. In Long that's Beach. right. We did talk about that. Uh, he's did. from Long Beach, California. Alex Cars is joining us. Hi, Sorg. I'm a man of I'm sorry. I'm a man of many hats, as I'm going to probably talk about a couple times. Absolutely, absolutely. You're definitely deep into the media, so it's appropriate to have you on here. Also, I I'm always I always chuckle to myself a little bit when I I started a podcast for the explicit reason of to not to not specifically hear uh, opinions of people in California and New York City, and here's somebody from California joining us on the show. Look where you are now. <laughs> It comes full circle here on this near anniversary of the show. I know we were supposed to have a episode 400, the eight-year anniversary. We pushed it off a little bit because of some scheduling snafus, snafus that happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, next week will be our 400th uh, edition. It will be our uh, eight-year anniversary. Uh, we're looking forward to have some uh, people on here and celebrate that appropriately. But I'm kind of glad we moved it because there's a lot of Apple things going on, and I think it's going to take over a lot of the show, which I guess also would probably be appropriate considering probably what we talked about in the first show. Show. But anyways, um, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com, including our awesome chat interviews. We got a great collection of those out there as well. Uh, you can drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on the Twitter, the Facebook page, and the Facebook group where we have a lot of discussions. We share stories. Uh, a lot of them make them into the show here. You can subscribe and rate us over on Apple Podcasts, Alex. <laughs> Who has been keeps reminding me that it's no longer iTunes? It's just Apple Podcasts these days. Don't blame me. Blame Apple. I no, I'm blaming. It just it's, it messes with my flow. Uh, Stitcher, so, Spreaker, soon to be, be HTTPS only. Soon to be. Oh, geez, another <laughs> thing I need to freaking fix. Uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Music Podcasts, uh, as well as Art iHeart Radio, and of course we're live here every Tuesday on the Facebook page for Awesome Cast at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, thanks to our friends Rivers Edge PGH dot com. They stream us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. and uh, as well as our, our River Talk Awesome Thing of the Month every th uh, roughly every third Saturday. Actually, we're gonna have a special edition. River Talk is gonna come to you uh, from in this studio. 
in advance of our, our celebration next week for eight years of awesome cast. So uh, Brian Crawford is going to be bringing uh, his shenanigans to a beach view uh, out of the Millville uh, studio and right here into our neighborhood. So we're looking forward to that. And, uh, and that will be our upcast awesome thing of the month as well. Uh, so uh, check that out. That's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be streaming on the River Talk uh, Facebook page, and of course, we'll share it over on these as well. Also, the 405media.com has been streaming us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. Another weird thing when I was in Portland on the West Coast and actually getting a notification at 9 a.m. saying, hey, this is kind of early. Oh, this is when it's supposed to be. Uh, but uh, that was a lot of fun to kind of figure out there, too. Also, uh, you guys can advertise the show like Alex does. Um, hit up Missy uh, over there, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com if you want to get the word out through this awesome venue. We got a lot of ears on in a lot of companies that are here in Pittsburgh that have a foothold some of them begin with a G and end with an oogle. Uh, and also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club $5 level. Brand new. Thank you so much, John DeGore, for uh, joining the patrons this month, as well as Matt Weller, who's been uh, actually giving us a lot of feedback, as you heard of the last episode, and we got a little bit more this, me- this week as well. And at the fan of the show, dollar level, Michael Fedor Show, uh, joining us as well. You guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome casts and, uh, and, and be part of that and literally help us keep the lights on here in the show. Um, as long as the thunderstorm doesn't knock them out. It's flickering a little bit. I'm a little concerned. We'll see how that goes. So let's get into our awesome things of the week and less about talk about things. They're not specifically Apple for a moment because I know where we're going, right? So let's go with you, Alex, first. Do you have something called Move It? Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a man of many hats. One of those hats is not that of a driver. So I rely on public transit a lot. Uh, you know, the buses, the trains, and whatnot. And I've tried a lot of uh, transit apps before. Uh, Google Maps actually does a pretty good job of transit, but it's all based on approximations and schedules. Uh, I even use an app called the Transit app, and that's pretty good. Except that for my local uh, public transportation agency, there's no real-time data, so there's no like real-time arrival times. But Move It, Move It actually solves that problem for me. <laughs> After all this searching, uh, Move It's the one that actually has uh, it has uh, Long Beach Transit uh, real-time information, so. I can actually find out when is the bus coming. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, so that's move it, M O O V I T. And uh, to give you an idea of the comparison here, uh, the website for Long Beach Transit also has the real time info on there, but they kind of, there's a weird thing with it that it's two minutes behind. So if the bus is two minutes away, it'll tell you it's four. But then you realize that it's based on like two minutes ago. So this is actually, I would say, almost more accurate in getting you your proper times than, say, that website. So I I quite enjoy it because the iOS app uh, also has a widget for arrival times at your favorite stations. So, for example, there's you know a bus stop right by my house, and I can set that as a favorite. And the widget will let me know hey, your bus is coming in like five minutes. And thankfully for me, I live five minutes away from said bus stop. So, uh, And what I also like is I originally found this kind of searching for transit apps that were also uh, available for Apple Watch because like Sorg, I recently got an Apple Watch. And there's an app for Move It for the Apple Watch, which essentially lets you find out the, you know, your arrival times of the buses. So that's my awesome thing because I can finally find out when my bus is coming. <laughs> so, so I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was looking on their website and and I didn't load it to my phone yet. But on their website, when I look at the local transit here in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. it looks like there's like a little green number with like some Wi-Fi type. Yeah, those that's the, that, that those are the real time. Uh, that's a real time uh, arrival time. Okay, so and then so one of the interesting things about Pittsburgh is our buses are hooked up for real time transit 
but our mm-hmm. trains are not. Right. I thought so they, it's kind of cool. I thought though, they got they, added though. No, I don't think so. Not mm-hmm. yet. Because it because I can see like the forty one leaves in twenty five minutes. Right. And it has the little green wavy lines next to it. Mm-hmm. But the the red line it says leaves from Dormont Junction seven thirty nine p.m. Somewhere right. between seven thirty nine and eight, and then I would get there at eight oh two. Um, so it's 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 kind of cool that they really sh- they they help they really drilled down into what data they have that's real time and what's not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it yeah. actually has the bus. It has the bus pin marked <laughs> like where yeah. it currently is. Yeah, yeah. There, I I was when I did some research on on it, and there's like a there's a technical aspect to the uh, what real time data is available and what isn't. Uh, it's the reason why Transit App has. Uh, so the Transit app, for example, has real-time info for the LA Metro, which is both the buses and the trains in this area, uh, within basically LA County, uh, and also has some real-time data for the OCTA, which is Orange County's transit, but it does not have it for Long Beach Transit because even though Long Beach Transit does have real-time, there's some weird like database. It's a it's a weird database thing that kind of keeps them from accessing it so the fact that move it does have that info is is really nice, nice. they have a w- widget for your website store you can actually put the move it widget on your website and type in wherever you're currently at and it'll give you directions to sorgatron studios Ooh, i mm-hmm. like that that could be a lot of fun you could, you could probably also drop that in if you're doing events and stuff too right yeah say boom here you go it's available in 40 languages, used in 1,500 cities in 77 countries. I like Pretty that. Pretty darn nifty. I use the Transit app as well um, whenever I need to, uh, and it seems to serve me pretty well. But again, I'm not like I know you. You, you said you were not connecting certain things, right? In it's, your it's area. My, yeah, so my my, lo- my local transit agency for some reason wasn't giving excuse me real time info, and this mm-hmm. one does so. Awesome. Well, my my thing is something for me to do while I'm on said transit. Um, I discovered, and I don't know why I didn't know notice this before, because this has actually been a something that's been out since uh, January January of last year. Um, but I was really I was really jonesing for some because uh, I, I, I download all the Sega games, uh, the the Sega uh, was a legacy uh, that they're doing where you can buy them and they're ad ad based and you pay two dollars and the ads go away. I just grabbed like Super Monkey Ball just came out, Secure Addiction, which was like the first game that you were able to download on on an iPhone of any significance, right? But of course, this is a newer version of it, uh, so it was kind of cool to kind of go back and and play that on such a larger phone and realizing I used to play this on like what a three GS at the time, right? Uh, so I was just kind of jonesing for some old stuff and, and Chilla, you, you were mentioned about Mega Man coming to the switch. So that was kind of on my mind and I do have Mega Man X, but never really had a lot of other ones come out that I was aware of. Turns out I'm completely wrong about that. And, uh, the first six Mega Man games are available on iPhone and, and also Android. It looks like, um, unfortunately, and there's a lot of options. It looks like, you know, it says Mega Man Mobile. You have a little bit of a, uh, you know, the touch interface uh, for your controllers. So, I mean, that's only going to be so good, right? And uh, it's updated. They say they kind of updated for playability on on a mobile device. Um, it's nice because there are uh, there are unlimited lives. It it saves your progress as you go. So no no more of those weird grid passwords or anything like that. Um, you do get the chance to like there is like a button to quick switch your 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 power that you've gotten from one of the one of the robots. So that's kind of cool. Um, I just picked up the ice. I just beat somebody before the show. It, it it suffers from the usual stuff of of converting something from like a you know a Nintendo game like this to you know to 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 a mobile console or a mobile touchscreen uh, uh, setup like this. I, I kept hitting the the power select by accident as I was fighting like Iceman. Did your screen go to sleep? Yeah, it did. Sorry. Yep, there it is. Um, so it's pretty cool. I did notice that the frame rate isn't terribly good on this. Like it felt like slightly choppy. Um, and, and actually the article that I found is, Hey, it's great. These games are out, 
but they kind of suck according to <laughs> the article because <laughs> they were playing on a pretty a pretty hefty uh, Android device from the looks of things, and uh, and and said that it wasn't. It wasn't all that great. But for $2 and to really live a little bit of this, and I'm playing, I, I just downloaded the first Mega Man. Um, when you get hit, it, vi- it vibrates and things like that. Uh, and, but it's still, to me, it's enough to be able to hop into something nostalgic like this on my iPhone. Um, it kind of still lends to the issue that I typically have with these. Uh, for instance, all those Sega games came out, right? And and I've had some of them that were from before this this uh, Sega Sega Forever actually is the series that they're doing now, and uh, some of them like the first Sonic game, Sonic CD, Sonic One and Two are also available on the Apple TV, which is great because I have a, a Steel Series controller for that, and they're really nice to play. It feels like I'm playing Sonic like the good old days, right? But like a widescreen HD TV on a 42 inch, which is awesome to have that kind of blown up, and, and actually kind of still accurately represented. None of these games, all the rest of the Sega ones, these Mega Man ones, do not transfer over to Apple TV. And it just seems like such a missed opportunity, unfortunately. But still, it's, it's kind of nice to have those on, on the phone. So I'm kind of glad they're available. Yeah, that really surprises me that they don't, that A, they don't put in the the stuff for the controllers because that that same steel series controller would work with your phone yeah if you you know what i mean and and it does surprise me like crossy road got ported instantaneous crossy road uh pac-man 256 the uh the uh abe's abe's not abe's odyssey uh alto's odyssey and adventure games are on there amazing just awesome to play on there um inside from the the people that did um play dead who did um limbo uh, that's on there. It looks amazing on there, which reminds me, I need to buy the rest of those levels for that game. Um, but, <laughs> but, but still, it, but it, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you that it's a complete missed opportunity. And I, I, I don't. I mean, why? I'd be interested for someone to correct us if we're wrong. If I'm wrong, yeah, it can't be that hard to port it over. It's so, so this, and this lends to what I think your awesome thing is, which also lends to the not awesome part of thing of it is there's a lot of this crossover that happens, but it's also up to the developers to make sure that does happen. I'm noticing that on my Apple Watch. I do notice that I was able to pay for my drink on Apple Pay. I'm sorry, on my on my um, Apple Watch with Starbucks, but I don't see one for Dunkin' Donuts. So yeah, it's, it's like, totally up to the developer it's totally, to develop yeah, that so, UI. And that's the only reason why I don't have Google Assistant on my watch. And it's up to that, right? Um, it's up to them deciding that there's an iPad version of certain things, which is surprising sometimes what you find there is no iPad version for. Or Instagram. Why... <laughs> Instagram, for instance, right? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have an iPad formatted app. They're, they're using the old school um, so, phone version. So that's, that's, the, that's the, the unfortunate side of what your awesome thing of the week is. I don't mean to kind of lower the importance of it, but it's, it's something to consider. It, it, yeah. So, so uh, speaking of my awesome thing of the week, so Apple announced it at WWDC kickoff and the keynote that uh, developers are going to have the opportunity to port their iOS apps onto Mac OS. Um, the, the app development framework and it currently, even currently to the public, even as of WWDC, doesn't have, we talk about kits, right? You have Siri kit and game kit and all these different kits. It doesn't have the UI kit elements from iOS to handle uh, window resizing, a number of things, as well as you know how to deal with the trackpad or mouse um, gestures, things of that nature. And they're helping and they're bringing that that piece of UI kit over into the Mac OS development framework. I, I kind of part of that. If you're like, you know, I, I, I think immediately a first thought that may come to this, that I feel like I'm going to hear on every Apple podcast in the next couple of weeks is, well, why isn't there a touchscreen? I was like, kind of more think about it as, um, you know, the, this kind of transferring things to a touchpad. Think about how when you transfer an app from your phone with a touchscreen to an Apple TV, you're not going to have a touchscreen. Right. So it needs to be adapted to that interface that they give you, which is a touchpad on a controller or a 
controller, right? Um, it's kind of that similar thing. Like, and again, why it's not one to one? It's not like Android where you can just open an Android app, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be no. We're giving developers the option to do this. Yeah, um, and and I, where I think what'll be interesting is is how how they execute this, and I think. I thought it was interesting the way they put it because they came out on stage and said, there's this, there's this rumor that keeps floating or this question that keeps floating around. Are we merging Mac OS? I iOS. love that. I love how upfront they were about that too. Yeah. And then there was the big, and then they went to the next slide and it was boom, no. Um, but the, and then they talked <laughs> about, you know, uh, how they're going to achieve this. And they said, you know, we have to eat or kind of give, they gave the, I don't think it's verbatim, but you know, you got to eat your own dog food. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, and that's how they're porting um, FaceTime. No, not multi-person. Oh yeah, it is. It is the FaceTime, the new FaceTime, right? FaceTime news, and what was the other one? Stocks, stocks, and voice memos. And voice memos. I love how they're like, "Hey, we're completely adding these things from your iPhone to this thing," Uh, and then in the next slide, oh, by the way. These are iOS apps that we ported, and these are the yeah. tools that we're going to have open for you next year. So, like, we have a timeline now. So, and this doesn't happen too often with these guys that you get that far of an outlook, unless it's something very important. So now, I mean, I think there's probably a lot of developers that are thinking, "Oh, okay, so what can I do this?" You've got a year to think about it before you get the tools, and you get a year to think to see. Oh uh, yeah, about a year because you're you know if you're like chilling or you got your betas. Uh, if you're at WBC, <laughs> you got your betas. Um, you know, and you're looking at the way they did this and how they re-implemented things from from their own internal apps, and that's informing what you can develop for your own app now when these tools come out in a year from now, say, right? Yeah, and and I think to give developers the time to start thinking about. Hey, if you're gonna want to redo your UI completely um, to be able to adopt from phone to tablet to laptop to desktop, whatever, I think this gives them that that entire almost what would it be 12, uh, 15 months to really start planning that timeline. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, I'm guessing there. If you're probably at WWDC, I'm guessing there's at least a couple classes or sessions about how this is working because it also wouldn't surprise me if hey oh by the way you got to use swift oh yeah um oh, so if you're yeah if you're moving if you also have to move your code base um i could see developers needing needing that kind of time um for that i'm interested to see what they do some, with some of the games like could fortnite run better on Mac OS as an iOS ported app versus trying to download the Epic games. Hell, can Fortnite free Fortnite freaking go on the Apple TV at this point? Yeah. And well, I don't see why as, it shouldn't. They, they, but that'll be my favorite, but that'll be my, my uh, awesome thing of the week next week. If, if that gets announced to E3, it's supposed to be coming to the switch. Yep. Yep. If it can run on the switch, it can run on the Apple TV. If I it can run det- on your phone, it can run <laughs> on the Apple TV. Let's be honest about this. I think the deterrent to the Apple TV is a Apple doesn't release the number of Apple TVs used and sold. Mm -hmm. So no one really knows how many are out there, how many are out there and B the original development spec. And it took them quite some time to, to change their mind. The original development spec for the store was your game could use a, a remote control, an external remote, but had to function with the remote that came with the Apple TV by itself. And when you think about that, so that gives you a directional pad and one button, which is why things like Crossy Road, right? Crossy Road's a directional game and that's it. You could have probably done Flappy Bird. They haven't done required controller apps yet. So I they, thought I've seen them in the store. They That took them a good six to eight months, I think, to change their mind on that. And that's when um, Fire TV really gained traction with the Fire TV box. And they they had games that were controller required. And they sold that controller for that. And 
that's where I think a lot of developers were kind of turned off at the get-go and what are they going to get out of this we're looking at uh and as far as hardware goes the the apple tv i think the standard apple tv let's call it is running an apple a4 which also is it's the same chip as an iphone 6 and 6 plus um and honestly i think you're running at a lower resolution on a 1080 screen than you would be even on an iPhone. Is that correct? Yeah, what's the, yeah, what's the four? Yeah, but what's the four K running? Isn't it running in like an A eight? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's running an A ten. The A N. The A eight is the is the like the the non four K one. Okay. That came out the first one that like lets you use apps. So, um, the first <laughs> here's a here's a fun fact. I didn't realize this. The first uh, Apple TV actually ran a Pentium M. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and then they were into yeah, A4s, A5s, and now A8s with uh, the standard one, and, and the 4K gets the. Oh, is it the original one? You mean the white one? I guess so. The one that looked like an iMac. You have one around? Yeah, but it's wedged behind a bunch That's of stuff in a go box. Go get it. It's it's holding a, it's it's holding <laughs> up a table, guys. <laughs> yeah, I do. I I do have it, and I actually have it jailbroke with. Like uh, XDMC oh, running on it. Pry that stuff. thing open and let's see the Intel inside, baby. And that actually has a physical hard drive in there too. Mm, wow, wow. All right. Well, on uh, that on that note, it didn't. It, uh, that's definitely not getting Adobe Atmos. <laughs> no, it's not. Man. Well, I don't think mine is either. So it's a, it's the 4Ks are getting Atmos, right? Yeah. Not that I mean, do, do who do, do, do any of us have? An upgraded sound system, uh, Chilla, most no, likely. I don't even. I, I don't. You don't. Wow. I don't even have a. I don't even have a sound bar. <laughs> nope. I nope. just have headphones. I mean, I geez, the percentage of the stuff I watch on a phone versus or iPad versus television these days is kind of astounding. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I was just gonna say uh, two things. One, I'm looking forward to Snapchat on Mac OS. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. Uh, but on a more serious note, I would actually like to see something like an Instagram get ported over, like because that would solve the one issue people have had about Instagram and the fact that you almost have no way of uploading photos to Instagram from a computer. You have yeah. to find all sorts of ways around it. I, that, that's going to open up one of these days, just for, for the fact that Facebook just just to help develop or not developers, advertisers, right? Yeah, like it, it just seems inevitable. But uh, I feel like, I, I, and I feel like they're pinning. So, in the next rev, they're removing Twitter and Facebook from the the login, where you can tweet directly from the notification bar and stuff like that. Mm. And Twitter has removed their app from the Mac App Store. I feel like this is going to hopefully get them to head those apps back. Yeah, yeah. to the Mac. Um, uh, I don't know. I I have I have a Windows tablet, and I have to say I'm not. I mean, I know PWA's progressive web apps in the the Microsoft App Store are, are. It's it's nice to get that app interface, but they can't update the live tile. There's just certain things that apps can do, and they do extremely well. Um, that I feel like I just don't get the justice out of a browser. <clears throat> or even a progressive web app. Um, maybe the progressive web apps will get over time, get better over time. But I really feel like Mike or Apple's doing the correct thing Dad? and and keeping the app ecosystem alive versus trying to push everyone to a browser. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, it, it works for them. They're <laughs> kind of the yeah. success, right? Well, guys, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. For whenever the guys are in studio, we're still figuring out a way to fax that pizza to Alex out there in Long Beach. Um, but, you know, hey, you know, Slice on Broadway West, it could happen. It could happen. There Those is, guys keep expanding. There is a Broadway in the city of Long there Beach. There you go. Perfect. I will continue to say this until uh, someone from Slice on Broadway emails me. You know what you need to do? You should You should take pictures of any open storefronts on Broadway Avenue in Long Beach. And you should tweet. Oh, I'm sure there's a few. You should tweet. And any of you out there that are not in <laughs> spitting distance of Pittsburgh uh, and you have a Broadway, you should just take a picture of empty storefronts on your Broadway, send it to PGH underscore slice on the Twitter and say, hey, this is a Broadway avenue in my town. I would like to have a slice on my Broadway. Here's and a I nice probably, place for you to and occupy. I probably, 
And I promise not to kick the door down. And I down. promise not to kick the door down. That's a Wrestling Mayhem show thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much for these guys that have been supporting the show for so long and some other properties that we're doing here. Uh, of course, I mentioned the expansion, the OG, the original, right up the street here from the studio on Broadway in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates if you still believe in baseball, um, uh, Main Street uh, down in Carnegie, PA, as well as over on the East End, our friends over there are able to check it out. And I've been having a lot of people come in and tell, talking about how they've been partaking in that, that, uh, that reside their business over on that end of town. So it's good that they're getting around. Good to see them expanding uh, and, and good to the, have their support here on the show. Thank you. And check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com to find out more and order online. Also on Grubhub, by the way. Uh, anyways, also on Uber Eats, I think, for the downtown location. So uh, so I want to touch base. This was something I didn't know was happening, and I think I want to swing out to this Saturday. Um, Matt Weller, I mentioned it. He's been uh, popping us some comments over on the Patreon page. And uh, he says, uh, BTW, what's the buzz in Pittsburgh about the Century 3 Nerf War? Is it really happening? It seems like a log- logistical insurance nightmare and any of the Sorgatron folk going. Um, I think I don't I don't have a Nerf gun, but I know somebody who just invested in a bunch of them. Um, yeah, so Century 3 is one of those classic. It's a huge mall that has been just going downhill um um, horribly for the last like 10 plus years right so it's a giant cavernous in some places three-story mall right and uh and, and it's 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 i think it's pretty much done i think the last couple of things have gone out of there um i mean look at this thing is is it's I love big, crazy malls like this, and it's so sad to me that this thing's in such horrible disrepair and, and just, just unoccupied now and going to be torn down for sure very, very soon. But they're supposed to be having a Nerf war there. I don't know if this is a joke account or anything, but this I, I hope this is happening, especially since 2,000 people say they're going to it according to the Facebook event. Um, but according to this, this should be going down. Um <laughs> And I'm trying to see if there's anything anything else in the comments about it that that confirm or deny it. But it says uh, the the event is 18 plus. It's captured a flag. Players will be split into teams red versus blue. Participants are encouraged to supply their own Nerf arsenal. No restrictions. Battery operated ones are also okay. So this could be going down here. And since you know, you, I don't know about the cleanup because maybe we're not worried since this place is going to go away. It's it's been up for a share of sale and everything. So. There's that. Either way, I think there's going to be a lot of people with Nerf guns showing up at the empty mall um, uh, coming up here. So, uh, was it, I'm interested in seeing how this plays out because I actually went to Three Rivers Comic Con out there. Yeah. Um, Great stuff that our friends with Comic Book Pit I know have been involved with um, and, and some other guys as well. Uh, I got to attend it last year, um, and it's 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 a nice uh, mid-medium small sized comic con and i really enjoyed it Mm -hmm. but uh, and i actually went into the mall i grew up out that way so i was like i wonder what's left of this mall Mm -hmm. and there there are a few stores in in the mall um but i will say like the far wings are are taped off Mm -hmm. like you can't there's furniture and plastic like um, it's not police tape but like it's all you can't get over there so i wonder how this if this is real i'm very interested to see how this would work yeah it'd be interesting to see well i i want to bring i want to bring up something that uh i know i've been if you listen to some other podcasts i've been really angry about transformers but uh i i and thank you for grabbing this article this is nothing new this is from last summer but i i installed the ar apps like a few months ago saying hey i need to play with some of these and and I and and I haven't since I've gotten the newer phone that it's going to work better, of course. So I, I had a couple of things sitting on here. Um, one was uh, the Happy for the Sci-Fi Show. Again, it's kind of on my watch list as well. Um, uh, it has an AR app where you can talk to Happy, and you can. <laughs> Let me pull up my Twitter so I can show you guys the video here. Um, yeah, you can talk to him, and at one point he he poops, and I think I tweeted something along like uh, all this high end technology for poop jokes. But you know, in the long run, of course, right, right. Um, and and I'll pull up the video there. And so, just playing with a little bit here in the studio. 
And I was I was impressed with that as well as um, uh, the Transformers app. This is for the Transformers Last Night um, movie, which which um, I have so much venom over. But I love it because it's 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 Cade's uh, it's Cade's uh, uh, junkyard, and you put objects up, and you just let Bumblebee destroy things and draw a line with your finger, and he transforms into a car, and he's driving along the floor of the studio here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, to do this and again just just some fun freebie apps and of course we saw some ar things going on like i didn't there's there's some measurement apps out there already they talked about the new measure app that's going to come with the um ios 12 uh here so i don't know have you seen and i know you're probably playing with this more than anybody here chilla um what are kind of the best ar implementations you've seen so um the measure app so i actually used to use measure ar I was always worried that it was giving me an accurate uh, measurement, but it was it was pretty pretty accurate. I'm interested to see. I mean, they totally Sherlock Sherlocked that uh, that whole segment of the of the app store people that were making virtual measuring tapes and virtual levels and all that kind of stuff. Is um, it the AR measure kit? I, that's the one I was using. Okay. Now I'm just using the one that Apple gives me for free with the OS. <laughs> Um, oh, know. that's right. Because you <laughs> have, are we allowed to say anything about yeah, that? There's no. It's a public yeah. beta, right? It's a public beta. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Chilla has iOS 12, which yes. includes that measure app that they were showing off. Yes. Um, so, the 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 one thing that I would like to get more into, I really like, much like yourself. Like, have you ever seen what's the dinosaur park one? Oh, the is it not Jurassic World, but there's there's another one. Right. Yeah, well, I just up uh, Monster Park a- AR Dino World mm-hmm. um, is a pretty cool one. I've played the Mech. There's a Mech game. Um, the machines, um, which is kind of fun. Um, where where I feel like I get a lot more play out of it is there's like the Very Hungry Caterpillar storybook for kids that you can get mm-hmm. um there's a thomas the train like being able to play with with christopher would be really really cool but i don't feel like us both crowding around the same device um so the new where you can actually share the the ar experience across two devices that they're implementing i think is going to be really nice obviously I mean, we're, we're not going to have access to the apps until September, so we'll have to wait to see how well it works and whatnot. But I was just thinking about the the Bumblebee thing that you were talking about where you, know, you, you can draw your finger and make them drive around. It would be interesting to either be able to race or maybe I stack up a bunch of stuff on my side of the room and you stack up a bunch of stuff on your side of the room and whoever's bumblebee destroys the other person's stuff first wins. Like (laughs) that's that, (laughs) like those types of multiplayer sharing the experience, but not having to crowd around the same device. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm interested. There's a star Wars, the, the chess type game. Oh, the, the Jedi. Oh, I saw this. I keep seeing these in the stores and I downloaded the app, not realizing you had to buy the rest of the stuff. There's that the Jedi Jedi challenges, isn't it? Um, so, so you can download the app and play just the chess game. Oh, I didn't know the chess game was was actually in there. Yeah, the chess game is in there. You can play just that, but you can't do any of the other challenges because you don't have the the lightsaber piece and and whatnot. But you can at least play. But again, are we going to either crowd shoulder to shoulder so we can both share the same iPad? Wouldn't it be nice if you kind of propped up your iPad both on the opposite sides of the table and played it like a tabletop game well isn't this isn't this what the multiplayer mm-hmm. options are supposed to help solve like it, like the, the, they're, they they were talking about they showed they showed a game at wwdc where you both had like an iphone and there were things like wooden blocks kind of stacked on a table the, yeah so that's that shared experience yeah so yeah, yeah. You, that, but that's coming we won't see that until September. Mm-hmm. So you can't like, that's what I'm saying. It was like, if we played that chess game today, we'd have to both crowd shoulder to Around shoulder on the thing. same yeah. iPad. Um, 
and and kind of play that way or hand the iPad back and forth and I can't really see what you did. Like it's kind yeah, of yeah. it's kind of a kludged experience, but I think allowing Until we all get people. the AR headsets and yes. <laughs> and it all works and, and everything like that. So well even like it's been like you know I keep looking at the Jedi challenges. That thing's hundred and fifty dollars. It it includes these lightsaber gimmicks and and you have a headset that puts your phone in just like a Google, you know a Google cardboard kind of, or now you actually gear VR kind of set up mm-hmm. and I don't know too many other applications. So that is an expensive toy to do kind of one thing. Right. Yeah. And so. that's why that, that's why I was like, eh, it does, I'll, I'll wait for someone to, a bunch of people to start unloading them on sale or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it is inevitable. Let's be honest yeah. about this. So um, no, it'll be interesting um, to see kind of what what develops out from that. So, um, anyways, and I just by the way just downloaded a bunch of these things on my phone, so I'll be playing with a lot more AR, or maybe in another three months when I think about it. Uh, <laughs> all right, hey, I want to give a shout out to I don't know some stranger that keeps buying time on the show, Alice Carr's uh, design and media. I don't know. I don't know if somebody else on here would like to give a pitch for themselves. Uh, as I have no idea who that guy I don't, is. Yeah, I don't know who this Alex, Alexander Cars is uh, uh, happening over here, but he tends to do stuff. Do, do you know anybody, anything about this? Alex K? Nope. Nope. I'm just kidding. No. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been doing uh, graphic design for a few years now, as well as uh, kind of dabbling into different media. Like uh, I've been doing some photography and and video work as well but uh i specialize in branding and print uh whether that's making logos uh working on uh applying those logos to merchandise uh even have done some websites here and there and uh, i like to think of myself as a wordpress enthusiast uh so i tend to work a lot with wordpress for making websites for different projects awesome you can check out a lot of that. Again, you, you've worked with us here, helped us with some website and some uh, T-shirt design and DVD uh, design work uh, as far as uh, Sogatron Media and Psychic Media Services. So we appreciate that. And, Alice, we support your support of the awesome cast. So thank you so much for that. Check out alexcars.media or alexandycars.com. All right. Let's uh, uh, touch on a couple other stories. I, that's, let's just go ahead uh, and, and just just – Anything else, WWDC, because <laughs> there is a lot there. Updates to the watch OS. We talked a little bit about uh, uh, 4K uh, uh, AR updates, um, um, a little bit about the iOS uh, coming in soon, or at least partly uh, in this iteration coming up of Mac OS. Um, what else? Uh, Alex, I know you, a new watch OS user, uh, myself Sorry. as well, Sorry. right? Yes. Sorry. So can you hear me? Yes, yes, you Alex. Me? Yes, you will. You will in the fall. I will. Walkie talkie mode. Oh my god! Wow, nice segue. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was starting thinking like maybe that we should have a Watch OS podcast because like oh, enough of us man. have it, and some of us are brand new to it, and and so basically Chilla can lead us by the hand. The watch hand, of course, <laughs> uh, as the as the expert that's like like probably been using it since one point So the the interesting thing about the the watch OS is they don't, and I don't know if you noticed on the Slack yesterday, they don't do a public beta for watch OS. No, no, yeah, I I, I saw um, your disdain over that. Yeah, so I'll I'll be interested to see if that's something that comes up because I did notice, and I'll have to check it because I've they allude to the fact that you can load watch OS from the from the public beta but you actually can't um and i noticed yesterday when i was upgrading the ipad and i went to install the profile it said do you want to install this on your ipad or do you want to install this on your home pod and i was like "Hmm." (laughs) what (laughs) so because that's the other thing you couldn't get betas on before was you couldn't get beta for the home pod so i'm wondering if they're going to extend additional betas to some of their non iPad iPhone devices for this round. So I will be be checking that out because I do want to give walkie talkie a try. Mm -hmm. Um, The things that were a little more interesting, interesting to me. um, And we always get 
the news. So I would pay attention to the news cycles over the last next couple of days as people also go through their settings um, panels to see what else is new. I've heard, you know, multi, multiple faces on face ID. Um, one of the cool things I saw today was, have you ever used a service where it said, we have to send you a text message with a code? Yeah. Um, to, to log into a website kind of as a second factor of authentication. Um, if you get a text message and Safari recognizes that you're in an author auth panel, um, it will actually give you the quick, the quick uh, finish text for what you, the code that it just, you just got in the text message. So I thought hmm. that was kind of cool. Um, but one of the bigger things for me was the the NFC pairing with their partnering with, I think they started with four or five colleges in your entire identification and everything for that college, um, buying meals, getting into your dorm, uh, checking out library books, whatever, um, is all going to be tied into the NFC chip in iOS on your iPhone, um, which we've recently seen certain second factor authentication fobs that you would typically plug in USB can now authenticate to the NFC chip, um, I think using in LastPass. <clears throat> so I'm interested to see how far they let the public um, consume the NFC systems. Uh, I'm interested, you know, I don't want to have to carry my ID to work along with a credit card. Like it, really being able to take this and, and replace my wallet with it is is my end all be all. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm interested to see where that goes. Absolutely. Um, what else kind of sticks out for you guys? Uh, Alex, anything else you're excited about? Uh, I'm actually really excited about the WebKit, WebKit support that they talked about in the keynote. Uh, the ability to view certain web pages from the watch. And I really like the example that they gave on the keynote where, you, like, if you're looking at a website for a restaurant, uh, you'll be able to look at their menu on the watch itself instead of having to, I guess, look at it. Like, you have to pull it up on your phone or something. You can, uh, uh, I think ideas like that make it a lot easier to have information right there on your wrist, which I feel has been a big... I think it's been one of the best things that's happened to me as far as getting the Apple Watch has been the ability to actually get the information right there. I want to be able to, and they, they, they show this all the time in their demos, right? They, they have the watch up on the big screen. I want to know how they're getting that watch face up on the big screen because there's no way to airplay the watch screen. You can do a screenshot of your watch, but you can't do the your watch up on a up on a display so i wish they would either give us a toolkit or something that lets us actually do that and it looked like the woman riding the bike when they were showing her watch in action it looked like she had some kind of wire into it so i don't know if it only works via that port on the back i don't know <clears throat> um but uh the, the other thing that i thought was interesting was the apple uh, i don't know what you guys thought about it but Apple TV replacing your cable box. Um, mm. And, and I, I thought that was a pretty interesting attack on the industry. Yeah. I, I, they, it kind of perked my ears up a little bit when they mentioned uh, Charter Spectrum because that's actually the cable provider I have. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, personally, I think it would have been a bigger deal if I didn't already have that Charter app for uh, Roku, for the Roku stick that I have. But I, I think that idea of them working more with ca uh, cable providers has been interesting, to say the least. Oh, I'm sorry. I kind of I kind of zoned out for a little bit because I've been <laughs> playing some Star Wars chess here because I figured out how it worked on my phone here. So I was just kind of you know just playing it in the middle of the the switcher. So you know like wow, this is this actually does look kind of good, cool. But uh, yeah, I can see I can see where you're kind of actually after you place it. Like you have to get away from it too, like <laughs> uncomfortably away from it. Is all I always set up my AR far too close to myself, and then I'm like <laughs> awkwardly trying to dance around it and everything, um, and and it just kind of pops up on top of Alex over there. Uh, so <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, that's a lot of fun. I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit later, Shiloh. Well, well, you know what? Maybe I should bust that out on board game night when we have that at the studio here. 
That would be fun. It, it, it seems to make sense, right? Uh, we can grab the giant iPad for us to huddle around. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, no, yeah, it looks like we're going to have a lot of fun stuff coming up here. Uh, I, like I said, I, I made the comment. I, I feel like um, there's enough going on there to, and again, this is for developers for the most part, but still it is a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's still a little bit of, sorry, I was waving to somebody, so they distracted me outside. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of, of reassurance that you're going to be well taken care of being part of the Apple ecosystem, right? Um, and again, having pretty much all sides of the coin here, uh, most of us between the iPads and iPhones and watches and computers, like seeing all that play together and being okay with being in that closed ecosystem, uh, and seeing the benefits from that, uh, kind of work well, right? Yeah, I, I think I, I... Like I've never had a problem with go go for it. And it was funny because someone actually said to me, "Oh, I don't think my wife's Mac is going to get the update." I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Oh, well, maybe." It will. I'm like, "I mean, I have like the second gen i or um, MacBook Air, and I'm still getting the updates." It's <laughs> like, amazing that they that they've they're still been supporting so far back that the that the five S. Is still being supported back to 2013. Yep, is like, impressive, it, really. The, the iPad Air, Air Two, mm -hmm. like they're all getting. But I think you're seeing like Fortnite won't run on certain older devices. Well, yeah, because it, they, like they can't, right? Like, like there's been significant upgrades to this, you know. Even to the point where, as I, I think I said this in the Slack uh, for you, Chilla, or maybe a comment or something. I'm sad because I downloaded a couple of games to see what a watch could do. And there's some nice animations on this thing. I just wish they were real games. They're not like the BS little like minor games that that I found, right? Um, like you realize that maybe even like people have like devices like this and they're capable of so much more. Yeah, and that's where I, I, I go back to that. You know, do we know how many watches are out there in circulation and, and what that what does that look like if I sold a 99 cent game that's targeted at the watch market? Am I going to get my money? Am I going to get my money back in, from my development time? I, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's but still I, I totally out. agree. I feel, like, I feel like being part of the ecosystem, everything works well together. And I just feel like they, it's a good, you get a good five year solid run minimum out of their devices oh yeah which is great also amazing <clears throat> for hand-me-downs for your family yes uh as well so uh real quick i want to touch on these last two items here you guys have in the list uh alex tell me about um ibm shutting down this is a less than awesome thing sir uh ibm shutting down uh, uh enhanced uh with sunsetting free streaming which i didn't realize oh. they owned Ustream. yeah uh, i was gonna that's how i was gonna um so, I'm sorry. Did I step you, on your segue? No, no, no. It's okay. Oh, I was gonna say because I didn't. That's why I put it where I put it in the doc because it's not an awesome thing. It was a, it was a story. Um. So yeah, remember UStream? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> we used to use that. And then Didn't there would be a stick cam. It was, then they then they got then they started running like Spanish language uh, feminine hygiene commercials over our show, and that got really mm -hmm. weird. Mm hmm. Well, at some point, IBM took over. And it became IBM Cloud Video. Oh. And IBM Cloud Video is going to be uh, shutting down the free plans for Cloud Video, which includes free accounts for Ustream on August 1st. Jeez. And that means that if you run a free, like if you're running, if you run a channel on Ustream and you aren't paying for it already, which I think a lot of people on Ustream are that case, uh, just to give you, in fact, just to give you an idea of how I even found out about this, my uh, my pastor from my church had emailed me uh, because we use uh, we use UStream to to live stream our our church service. Mm -hmm. So that's how this all started. We found out, oh, we actually don't have like we're in a couple months they're going to be shutting that down. And even as, as the address is like like transfers you to video.ibm.com now. So I think. I think a yeah. lot of people have been seeing the writing on the wall with all the changes yeah. and probably moving to things like so, Twitch, right? Yeah, so so yeah, they're shutting down the free accounts on August 1st. 
that means you're not going to be able to broadcast or have viewers watch. They're the giving you way more notice than Justin TV did, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was like you uh, woke up this morning and you didn't have a channel. Yeah. Uh, watching Discovery are shutting down in early July, so uh, the ability to explore channels on Ustream is actually going away beforehand. Um, yeah, it's it's a scary time for the people that aren't already over on Twitch <laughs> <laughs> or Facebook um, Live or or YouTube. You know, finding yeah. their niches there. Now, yeah. Now I mentioned that I made note of the fact that there is a little bit of an upside to this, and that IBM. Uh, cloud video is improving their professional plans. Mm. Uh, they're adding more features to the plans, including automate or automatic closed captioning through IBM Watson. Really? Uh huh. That the the same guy, the same uh, AI that they, if I remember correctly, had on Jeopardy that one time, is going to be helping <laughs> you give automatic closed captioning for your for your videos mm-hmm. and live audio polling. Ooh. So. There's going to be more storage on the videos. Uh, the silver plan, which right now runs you $99 a month, is going to go from giving you 50 gigs of video storage to a terabyte. Hey, you know what? These are I, I'm actually looking for some live streaming, like professional live streaming options. So this is now a consideration, especially since mm-hmm. I asked Vimeo what their plans were, and they said they started at $10,000. It's like, yeah, oh, I- yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently you have to be like a, a, a I don't remember, it's like an enterprise or business Vimeo account just to even do live stream. Oh, absolutely. So it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah, no. There's been some investigation for some stuff we're doing here, and oh yeah. boy, oh boy. Yeah. But, uh-huh. uh, and then on top of that, you actually get more video channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, the silver plan will actually go from one to five. So if you're, if, I think, these kinds of changes makes it clear that IBM video like cloud video is not for the startup live streamer trying to do no, like a real no, basic thing. No, they're, no. they're, they're moving in the direction of businesses. This, this is, if you need something that's a white label live stream, preferably that you get paid for, um, you know, that has some money yeah. behind it. That that's where you're at with this. This is like the next yeah. level. All right, we so, got a we got a fun thing that that Chilla wants to talk about here. They, he apparently wants to try in the studio next week. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Dark Forge Studios, coming at you right from the basement here. Actually, literally, they're they're in the same building here as Sorgatron Media. Uh, our friend Aaron down there has been making a lot of great props. Uh, he works a lot with foam. He's an expert in foam. That's what I gotta come up with a better way of saying that. But uh, <laughs> just the uh, still, still kind of transposing what he does. But you can check out what exactly he does at darkforgestudios.co. He's one of those cool kids with the .co, you guys. Uh, he does set work. He's worked with uh, escape rooms, with haunted ha- haunted houses here, and even in Dubai of all places. Uh, does a lot of prop work with foam, uh, and uh, you know I've seen everything from. From from vines down there to to severed limbs and a lot of fun stuff going on there. So check them out. Check out what's going on there if you have a project at darkforgestudios.co. And uh, and again, another creative professional here in the area and what's becoming a a creative a creative um, just center uh, starting here in Beachview with with no less than four companies, including us here. Uh, as well, so it's really cool to see that. Uh, let's say whether it's custom props, escape rooms, hot attractions, or custom set design, Aaron has done it all, and then some movies. He's worked on movies, you guys, and some really cool stuff out there. So thanks to DirkForgeStudios.co. Go check them out. Chilla. Speaking of AR, I'm surprised you didn't segue into this before. Yeah, I, I totally for I totally forgot I added to this to the doc, and I was interested in I, I don't know. If, if we want to mention what's going on in the studio in a couple Mondays, but I was thinking about whipping this out there as well. Um, hey, yo, the, <laughs> the, uh, of oh, the, the podcast meetup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, going to be a podcast meetup here in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you're part of the Pittsburgh podcasters group, you're invited. Uh, so go get and over there you, and then you can get the details. That's not part of the group. Yes. Go, go join, go the, join group. the group. Go join the group. It's a closed group, but it's a, you know, we will approve almost everybody. Um, except for that guy that was trying to sell like, I don't know, self-help advice or something that one time. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, jump in there and, and we got a cool event and just trying to do a meetup and get, get everybody together. It's doing a lot of different shows. So, but this thing is 
So this thing is it's it's AR, and I'm I'm interested to see how many people can join. I, I didn't see it on their website that there was a limit to this. I actually haven't downloaded it yet, but it's using some of Google's new AR technology, and it's called Just a Line. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows two people, at least from the examples, maybe more, um, to create line drawings in in uh, 3D space, and it anchors them. It's using uh, some of the AR core cloud anchor technology uh, that Google came up with. This is a, a an AR experiment from from Google, um, but they, they showed people, you know, two people opposite sides of the room, and they drew a tic tac toe board in the center of the room, and they're they're doing their tic tac toe. People are writing. Um, it, it's kind of to me in, an, an interesting take on. I wish you could change the colors or like kind of spray paint or do artwork, um, but obviously this is kind of a Gen One thing. Um, but uh, I'm interested in playing around with this and seeing how many different different ways we could use this. I was also thinking, could you imagine a, a huge whiteboard session? You could have any wall. Um, any wall instantly becomes a whiteboard. Mm. As long as you're looking through your phone, obviously. But <laughs> Or um, we have the headset that we played the Jedi game with and, yes. and just have it attached to our face. Yes, that would work too. And but, again, uh, eventually this is all going to be a fun little thing. Eventually this is all going to be built under our glasses, so it's going to be okay. Uh, it's going to be I'm going to get an implant in my eyeball. There you go. Exactly. I've been watching a lot. God, I've been watching so much sci-fi on Netflix lately. There's so much and it all seems like they all happen in the same time. Like it was like standard city shot, alter car- carbon, mute, anon. It doesn't matter. By the way, uh, anon was really interesting, I think. Uh it's like a it's like a not as depressing Black Mirror episode. Um, where they record everything that you see, um, and there's hackers and altered carbon. I'm about two or three episodes in. Fantastic sci-fi, and I'm about halfway through mute. Imagine a a mute Amish person in future Germany. Also, Paul Rudd. Hmm. Just throwing that. Just some geeky picks for you guys. Hey, okay, we got I'll a lot. Of- Hey, we got a lot of stuff coming up here. Uh, like I said, next week is going to be our 400th episode, eight-year anniversary officially. Uh, Uncle Crappy should be joining us here in the studio on the 12th. I, we invite everybody down. We'll have some announcement this week. It's been really busy and crazy lately, but uh, we're going to throw some stuff together here uh, uh, and and have have a good time to celebrate eight years of awesome cast. And as well as look for this Sunday River Talk at Sorgatron Media, 7 p.m. Eastern on the River Talk Facebook page. A lot of fun things going on uh, around that. The Nerf thing is happening as well. Uh, if you're here in the Beachview area, there is a crossings video from LivelyPittsburgh.com that's going to be filmed around 3 p.m. in the afternoon Friday. Um, there's a lot of other great videos on there of uh, what they've done in the past uh, over on the East End and, and basically just kind of pr- uh, bringing attention to walkability issues in neighborhoods. We have some interesting crosswalk, unfortunate situations that are really dangerous in our, in our neighborhood and bringing attention so we can maybe do something about that. So really cool thing they're doing. So give a shout out to that, livelypittsburgh.com for more information on that. And I think there's another one happening. You know what? Some, some, there's another one happening in another neighborhood uh, in a week or two as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Maybe that's your neighborhood. Uh, so cool things happening here in the Pittsburgh area. Also, if you happen to be in the area and you like Caribbean fusion, uh, was it Caribbean Jamaican fusion? Is that was that officially what it is? Muse up here in Beachview, uh, you can hang out and uh, brag about Beachview with our friends at Beachview um, Beachview Revitalization Advisory Group um, on Friday at 6 p.m. Look for the uh, Beachview Advisory Beachview Revitalization Advisory Group Facebook page for more information. Just come on down, eat some uh, Caribbean with us. Uh, patronize one of the local businesses and uh, and hang out with the crew. And then after that, we'll be back here in the studio for Riz Plays Games at Sorgatron Media at 8 p.m. Where is Twitch. Muse? Uh, Muse is, uh, it's a, we're going to get real local, you guys. Um, it's uh, right where the track split off to go into Dormont. And it's like that side street that goes uh, okay. down to Wenzel. I know, to, I know where you're exactly It used exactly to be like about. Locals Bar or something, maybe. Or that's okay. a different one, probably. But it used to be a bar, and now it's a Caribbean. Nice, nice patio out there and everything. I understand. There used to be a Caribbean place down by the the Big Shot Bob's. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. And it was La Casa Rasta and it became like yeah. a Las Palmas thing. And now, now it's a Mexican dessert store. 
that just oh. opened up. They've had the, the bars down here at the IGA across the street, and they are amazing. I can't wait to check out more of it. So really fun stuff happening in this neighborhood. So hopefully bringing some more attention to it. And thank you, everybody, that watches this show straight from Beachview. Thank you, Alex Cars. Again, I'll give him another plug, alexcars.media, to check out what he's doing out there in Long Beach, California, our West Coast Connection. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming in the last minute. I really appreciate it. And of course, John Chilla. Chilla on the Twitter is chillatech.net. John Chilla on the Facebooks. Yeah. And come, everything. come visit us next week. And of course, Sorgatron on the Twitter is sorgatronmedia.com for all the great podcasting going on. And see what else we're working on over at sidekickmediaservices.com as well. Thank you, producer Missy. Happy anniversary. What was it 14 years? Are we up to 14 years? Are we officially 14? <laughs> Is that the math? It all blends together until you gotta like give something silver or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we survived Lucky 13. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.